Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this demo. Um, this is going to be something a little bit different than we've done before. So I'm just basically going to run through uh, a bunch of dynamic stuff, but it's just going to be a lot of little small examples. Um, so I'm going to cover RBD fracture. I'm going to cover uh, vellum, um, how to use variants, um, and a few other little things. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make, um, I'm going to show you how to fracture stuff and uh, make a, a debris, basically. So we'll start off with geometry. We'll just call this debris. I'm going to jump in here, make a box. And I'm just going to make this so it's like a column really simple um, just drop down the match size and then set the justify y to minimum and that's going to sit this on the ground which is where we want it um, next let's go ahead and we'll throw down a transform just because i know we're going to need it and then the next thing we'll do is an rbd fracture um, and this is a really cool node I think it was introduced in um, 18 or 18.5, um, but it's pretty awesome. So you can choose from different material types with this, like glass, wood, and it's basically just like presets. Um, for this, we're just going to use concrete. And you get some really great control over your scattering here. So, down here. I'll cover some of these. I'm not going to go through all of them because it would take forever. So um, basic setup, you'll get these two fracture points. I usually add at least one more. Um, and then the fracture level, you can go in and we can make less scatter points. And basically all this is doing is a scatter, um, scatter by volume, basically. So it's just scattering points in a volume. Um, so under the hood, it's just doing a bunch of stuff for us. Um, so that's that'll work. Chorus, and then we'll add some chipping and chipping basically and it's pretty intensive you can see in here it'll chip in these corners and just make it more realistic um, and lastly we'll add in under detail we'll add some interior detail so when this fractures um, we have stuff to look at <laughs> all right um, so th it's about that easy to to make a fractured object so Let's go ahead and just drop in a ground plane. Um, we'll just do it manually just for practice sake. And then we'll run an, an RB, a bullet solver right here. Look this up. And you'll see as you roll over these little uh, node inputs, what goes in here. So I know constraints are going in here, prox geometry, and then here's our collision geometry. So I know I want my grid to be a collision geometry. So there, now we can see it. Um, and then I'm just going to drop down merge so we can see the ground and the finished simulation all together. Um, and the last thing we need to do is just move this up. Let's translate it up. And this actually brings up kind of a good point. Um, if you didn't know, if we don't want to simulate this as I'm kind of translating it, I could go up to the transform, but you can also turn the simulation off here. But I'm just going to go up to the transform and then just do this the old fashioned way. Just bring it up. It should work for us. And then finally, all we have to do is hit play. And what happened? <laughs> So we just have this brick just falling. Um, it's typically because of the solver. Um, it's either the solver or the uh, the RBD fracture. There's constraints that are just cranked up really, really high. Uh, and we'll go and find this real quick. Uh, right here, so you have the primary strength in, I think it's the strength variance. These are the big ones. So let's just bring this down to like, I don't know, 500. And then rerun this, see what happens. There we go. That's what we're looking for. 
So if we wanted this to break apart even more, we can lower this just to 250. Come up here and let's make sure we're not tilting it. There we go. And that's going to break a bit more. And let's take a look at our. Is all of this stuff is falling in there? Go ahead, our shipping strength. Let's lower that down to like a thousand and a little multiplier, maybe two. And you can play around with all of these settings to get different looks. Now it's starting to fall apart more. There we go. And now it's falling off the edge of the foot. So, as you can see, really easy, quick setup, and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this so right now i'm just using a box but let's just do something a little bit more interesting i'll just set up the toy back this off put that into our mesh size so it offers a really kind of easy way to transform this that you can you could run through your looks um, with very simple geometry, and then all you have to do is just swap in um, your actual hero geometry, and everything should work as expected. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, let's give it a run, see what happens. There we go. Very realistic too. All right, so that is a very simple RBD setup. Um, all of these setups I'm going to be showing you are, are relatively practical. Um, so I think everything that we've kind of covered so far in the semester has been about abstract and things like that. Uh, but this is a way that if you're modeling an environment or something, you could easily just bring a model in here, have this system set up, run it through it, export it, and then you're done. Um, way easier than trying to model little pieces like this. Um, so it's pretty cool. So that's our RBD setup. So next up, let's talk a little bit about um, setting up variants and, uh, and a little bit more about set dressing. Uh, variants are basically, if you're going to copy the points, it's a way to use a specific um, number in an array so it'll, it'll scatter those different objects um, randomly for you. Um, it's a very cool thing. Uh, usually, you used to have to do it with copy stamping, um, but now we don't have to. So let's go ahead and jump into this. And we'll just call this Random Rocks. And I got my rocks from uh, Megascans. So I, all I did was go to bridge and grab these mossy stone or mossy stones, um, download the FBX file. We're not going to deal with texture and anything like that. That's, we're just going to use the models. Um, so I download the FBX file, but you can see there's four separate meshes. Um, so how do we get to those? That, that's kind of the, that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go and find our FBX file. Here. And you'll notice right off the bat that these are huge. So I'm just going to drop down a transform. That's because these are set to Unreal scale. Um, so once we get in here, this is Houdini scale. Um, just a quick tip, quick, quick tip to remember um, if you're using Mega Scans inside of Houdini. Um, so the next thing up, we're going to remesh this just because. Um, we don't want really super, super high res geometry when we're doing these simulations and we can always go back and, um, remesh them again, um, to get the detail back. But when we're, when we're doing it this way, I'm definitely going to remesh these. It's also just for this demo. Um, you can see we could read, that's our, 
zero target size, but we're going to go way higher than that. I almost crashed my computer. <laughs> so let's get this back here. Go, I don't know, maybe around there. That should be fine. I mean, you can, it looks weird because there's other rocks shoved in there, which we're going to take care of here in a second. Um, so a new node, I think it was 18.5, is connectivity. Um, and this is a really cool node. And what this does is it actually analyzes verts that are welded together as one object. Um, and we're going to set our attribute for this to be called variant. And that's what copy to points is going to recognize as this variant attribute. Um, and that's all we have to set on this is just make sure it's point variant and set to integer, which is all the defaults. Um, and then one last thing we're going to do is make a group. Because if we want to separate this from the ground later, we're going to definitely want to group this. And we're just going to call this rocks. You see down there we have a permanent group of rocks, and it's 1496, which is exactly what we want. Um, so next up, we want to uh, scatter the points around. All right, so we need something to scatter the rocks onto. So let's go ahead and make some ground. Uh, so let's make a grid. And the size doesn't matter. All this stuff is kind of up to you. We'll bring it down a little bit. Raise up the segments. And we'll just run that into a mountain. So we're just making kind of a rudimentary ground plane here. Don't want anything crazy, just ground. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is use a scatter and line. And this is going to make sense a little later on. We're not going to tweak this just yet. And then we're going to put down point angle. And in this point angle, we basically want to figure out, we want to uh, assign our variance. Um, and it takes a little bit of scripting to do that. Um, I'm not the best VEX person, so I'm not going to try to teach VEX. But I will show you how the variance is set up. So. First thing we need is an integer variable. So we're just type down int and we'll call this num variance. And we're going to equal that to a channel integer. And this is going to be a string and we're just going to call this number of variance. We'll close that. And then we need a float. So we're going to need a seed value. And this is going to be another channel operator called seed. And then the rest of this code is going to be confusing, but I'm just going to write it for you. So it's I have variant. So we need another integer. And this is basically translating the math, I guess is kind of a way um, how I view it. Um, so it's, it's, we're translating numbers here, basically. And usually with like VEX, like it's a lot of it is just finding other code that does what you want. <laughs> Um, it to do and then just picking it apart. Um, it takes a lot of practice um, and a lot of help. Um, I have a I have a friend of mine who's really good with Vex. And he's terrific at helping me through Vex problems. All right. So basically, what this is doing is we've got this variant. Um, and we're setting this to an integer, rounding the integer. Then we're going to fit that number. Um, and we're going to take a random number, which is a float. And that random float is going to be assigned to each is point of the variable from IPT num, 
which PT num is the number of points. So for each point, it's going to assign a random value, um, and that's going to be between 0, 1, the number of variants, and this. Um, and this will all make sense here in just one second. So we're going to put down a copy to points. And before we do that, let's set our number of uh, variants, which we just hit this little button over here. Um, and we're going to need, let's see here, that's our seed, which that's fine. And I think we're going to need, let's check this real quick. There we go. Not sure why that didn't work before. Um, so number of variants, um, I know this has got three. So one, it's got three different variants. And I know that because it, it comes from this file. Um, Actually, I think we might have four, just to see if four works. Um, and then we'll run this into our copy of points. So geometry and copy, and then our source points. We have this here. So our scatter to align, which I said it would, we would talk about. Uh, we're going to go back over this. Um, and this, this thing is really a powerful node, but it basically allows you to scale, rotate, um, and position based off of scattering. Um, and right now, we're not scattering very much, so let's take a look here. First thing we want to do is check the coverage so here, and our coverage is at 0.5, so let's go and crank this up. It might have to go pretty high, so let's just go to 100. And that's a lot. So you can see we're getting all the same rock here. <laughs> so on our copy to points, this is really easy. So with the connectivity, remember we got this attribute variant. So now we get a copy to points, and then we have a piece attribute, and we can set that to variant. And you can see now we have a bunch of separate rocks. Um, they still look kind of funky though, they're kind of not really rotated in the right direction, things like that. Um, and that's where scatter and align comes into play. So we can go around and mess around with all of this stuff and offset angles. Set the target vector, which will make it point up. Um, this is actually pretty good. Um, I think with our mountain, I think we're going to increase this just so we can see. I want you guys to see how it's actually following the ground. Um, and to see this, let's go ahead and merge it. There we go, there's the ground. Um, it's a bit chunky, so let's go ahead and let's remesh it. I have a lot of rocks, <laughs> uh, but you can see the complexity is amazing and how fast that it works. Um, it's it's pretty impressive. So um, now let's go ahead and take this one step further. Let's think about this as a starting point for a simulation. Um, so let's go ahead and make another ground, and I'm just going to take my existing ground and duplicate it. Pull this off. I'm just going to transform this. Down. I'm going to scale it to that. Let's see if our scatter points are here. I think this will work pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and 
pull it down and why just a tiny bit more we just want to create some uh some distance for our simulation to happen here and i think this will work just fine all righty and let's just put this over here and i'm just going to name this just call this rocks call this Hero experiment. You know what? I'm just going to run these in models just for the, the heck of it. I'm going to save this just in case. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, because we're going to we're going to simulate these rocks now. Let's turn off the space. Let's see what we're talking about. Um, but to do that, we're going to have to get rid of this ground. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, let's go ahead and blast. And remember, we set up that group rocks and delete non-selected. And then now we've got just rocks. I think this, I think our hero ground is a little bit big. Let's just scale that down. There we go. All right, so here's our rocks. And next up, what we're going to do is set up a vellum, a vellum uh, simulation. So for this, and this is a little bit weird, um, it, there's a new node in vellum that works great. Um, so just bear with me. So there, we'll just drop down a vellum constraint. Just wire up the first input. And under our constraint type, we're going to do shape match. And what this does is creates these little constraints and tries to have these objects keep their shape and pretty much turns it into an RVD, which is pretty uh, incredible. Um, it's a really cool thing. It's not perfect, but for something like this, it works really great. Um, so next up, let's just run this into a solver. Let's make sure we're at frame one. So let's just kind of solve. Um, and then we're going to need some collision geometry. So here's our hero ground. We're going to run that into our solver here. And now we should be good to go. And this may take a minute, so I might have to pause this. It should run pretty fast. I have quite a few rocks in here. Let's, you know, let's good. It's a good thing to show. So let's go back up here to our scatter and line. And let's go to coverage like 50. You know what? And, um, and this is a good sampling. And then we can always go back and change this and do a really long set later um, for, for all of the for all the rocks. So this should happen pretty much real time. And you can see what's happening is the rocks are colliding and settling into grooves in the terrain, um, which is a real pain in the butt to try to do manually. So this is a really great thing to have. Um, and I'll just stop it there just so we can see what we're looking at. There you can see a really nice grouping of rocks. Very, very quickly in a very short amount of time with very little effort. Um, so it's a really cool setup to have. Um, and you can use this for, for so many different things. Um, 
for instance, we could take our grid that we've got here. Now we could do something. Let's rewind. I'm going to turn the simulation off. Just rotate this here. And then just duplicate it off. Rotate it back. Oh, wrong merge. So those two together. So now we've got two collision objects. Let's see what that does. If anybody can figure out why that happened, it's because I don't have my dynamics turned back on. Now they are. Now it's simmer. So now we have essentially got a rock slide. So these will probably all try to bunch up here. Some of them will slide down. The heavier ones will break through. Really natural looking uh, rock formations. And the great thing about it that this only took me 10, 15 minutes to set up is that once you have this set up, you save it off as a file. And then anytime you need rocks, you just dump your layout geometry in here, run your simulation, done, um, without a lot of manual set dressing. So we've got this nice look here, which is super cool. All righty, so that is Vellum Rocks. Um, let's see, what else do we want to show here? I think we can actually show some, some pops, um, some particle stuff. I haven't really talked about particle stuff uh, in a bit. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll talk about particle advection. Um, particle advection is where you use a volume to push around points. Um, and you get some really amazing looks with it. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up. I'm just going to comment these. Very great naming convention. Um, and then the first thing we're going to need is some kind of emitter. So we'll just use a geo. Let's call this emitter. And then we'll just drop a sphere in here. Polygons. Polygons here. And this is kind of be a little bit. A little bit of an abstract abstract effect, so I don't care if it's sitting on the ground or not. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is set up a pyro source. Now, you could do this manually. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use the shelf tool because it works really well. Um, I do suggest that you get into trying to build your own pyro um, effects solver. Um, it's, it's definitely good to, to understand the pieces, but for this, I'm just going to show you the quick and dirty. This is how you can get a really cool effect uh, relatively fast. So I'm going to grab the emitter and I'm going to go to my pyro and I'm going to do a sparse billowy smoke. And that's going to go through and run stuff. It's going to hit enter. And we're going to get this. Which is really cool smoke really fast. Um, but we're going to make this much, much cooler. So first things first, um, you notice it's not coming from our sphere. It's coming from some kind of porous or something. Um, so let's go back to our emitter. Drop down a null. And call this emitter out. Emitter. And flag that. That works. Now we're going to go into 
our billowy smoke. This is what the uh, the shelf tool set up for us. See, we've got an object import or a torus. We're going to change into an object import. A pyro source, which is basically scattering and setting up our density and temperature attributes. Um, some velocity adjustment, uh, rasterizing it so we can actually see it in the viewport. Importing it, applying this pyro look, which this is where we're getting our shading. Um, so if I wanted to just make this white and black, it's kind of like the traditional smoke. And I'm just going to leave this like this because we're not, it doesn't matter what color this is for us. Um, and then we have this just tacked out at the end. Um, and then we have our dot network, um, which is where we're going to do most of our work, um, at least in the beginning. Um, so let's just jump in here. And run through some settings. So first up, we have our Pyro. So enable sparse solving. This is really important. And when you did, when you click this sparse billowy, it sets this. Um, but if you're ever doing any of these other explosions or whatever, um, the sparse solving is way quicker. Um, and I'm not going to get into the math, but it's it's just it's quicker than a typical solve. Um, this is importing our volume rasterize, um, which has got our attributes on it, which everything looks good there. Make sure we've got velocity set up, which we do. So all that stuff looks great. All right. So I think that is good for our top. So now we need some particles. Let's go ahead and make a particle object. Let's do a geometry. All those particles. Dive in. We're going to merge in our sphere. So object merge. There's our emitter. We'll accept that. And then we're going to run this into a pop net. Um, and then we've got a couple other controls we're going to run off of this. Um, so I'm just going to set them up and then I'll talk about what's going inside of them. And I'm just going to set the copy to points up as well, just to have it so we know if we're doing something wrong or not. Save this. Um, now I just need an object to copy to the point, so I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. Did you talk solids? Sitting down there, and let's just use a dodecahedron. And I could see one thing that I haven't done yet was fix that emitter here. This is smoke base, so we want that sphere. So we'll just do another object merge. There's the emitter. Oops. That into there. Now it's going to come from our sphere, not this torus. Double check, make sure we're still good. Yep, still good. Let's go back into our particles and jump into this pop net. So we're going to need to do a few things in here. Um, the first one, uh, let's just make sure, let's just double check everything here. Make sure we're good. Our source birth rate. Let's go ahead and just lower this down to like 500 just in the beginning, just so it's, it works much quicker. Um, I guess we can do a thousand. And then we'll raise this up when we're ready to, to cash it out. Um, I 
think that's all we need to do on this one. And then next up, we're going to do a advection. So pop advect by volumes. And this is kind of like the workhorse um, of this effect. So we need first, we need to go and find our smoke. So we need to find the smoke object. So here, I think this pyro. Go back. There we go. So, just in case you don't know, like smoke object, that's what it's looking for. Um, I'm just going to call the smoke pop check. Is that kind of screwed me up there? So, now we'll go back to our infection. There's our smoke object, hit accept. And it's gonna up the air resistance just a bit. I think that might be it. Let's take a look. All right, Let's, I have to do some more here. Uh, I think we're gonna have to put some velocity into it, but let's just check. Collisions, I think all that stuff is fine. Um, let's put some wind in here, just maybe to get it get it moving. So that's moving, but that's not infecting. So if there's something that's broken here. OBJ, OBJ, smoke, smoke object, velocity. Sometimes you just have to walk through this stuff to make sure. I know what I'm doing wrong. Just in the wrong context. Back up here and take a look. This off. This off. Back here. It's still not affecting. Uh, I'm going to pause this for one second and see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, we are back. So um, I had missed a step in my setup. So basically, uh, we go back here to this effect. Um, this SOP path, uh, I was pointing to the wrong thing. Um, so I'll show you how to set that up now. So I basically, I just made a another geometry object and called it Vel Volume. And dive in here and all that's in here is a dot io and you can see it's referencing the dot network and it's referencing the dot node which is the output of that network so two very easy things to find um, and then down here under fields um, i just created three fields and in here it's density temperature and velocity so now basically what this is going to do is say okay i'm going to pull in that data and then now it's set to this output and then you can see in my infection here, it's set to that. And then infection type is update velocity. And let's go back to our source. Under birth, let's raise this up to like, I don't know, 10,000 a lot. And let this puppy run. You can see what's happening is the smoke is pushing particles around, uh, which gives us a really cool effect. And I'm just going to pause this and let this run for a second so you don't have to watch it, and I'll be right back.
Okay, so I ran out about 100 frames of this, um, which is enough for what we're trying to do here. Just making sure this doesn't crash when I do this. So now you can see I'm just copying those protonic solids to those points. Uh, I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. And now, if you remember before we set up these pointer angles, um, so we need to basically go in there and just set these controls up. <clears throat> um, and basically all I want is a control for the size um, and the rotation. And I also want to throw some color in here too, just to make it cool. So let's go and add a color. And I'm going to change this to ramp attribute, change this to age, and let's put some colors in here. Let's see if we can find something like rainbow. Let's change this range value to two, just to get a little bit more oomph. Well, that did not do what I wanted it to do. Something happened here. It's broke this, so let's get rid of it. Let's try again. I think we're going to have to jump that to our pointer angles now. Okay, I just added this ramp just to make some custom colors. Um, that other color wasn't working. You can see now we have these nice pretty colors. So we only really have two things left, and that's to set the size, um, our size control, and our rotate random. Uh, for size, really simple. Just grab the pointer angle. Let's call it size control. And let's change the shape and the color. Let me do the same with this one. All right, so this is just one line. Um, we just need the P scale. We want that to equal a ramp. Get that parameter scale, and this is going to be normalized to H. And we have to create the parameter for that. This let's just we can mess around. It depends on what the kind of look we want. I kind of want them to be bigger and then get smaller, something like that. Let's 
see what that looks like with the camera. Looks pretty cool. So that is um, several techniques that you can use. Um, the advection is definitely the hardest part and definitely hit me up if you have any problems with that. Um, but you can see just with these three different effects, there's there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, and it to render it, we can do something kind of simple. We can just go to our out. And this is for Houdini 19 people. I don't think this is available in 18. Uh, we can just throw down a karma up. Then here I'm going to hit save just in case because this is an alpha. Um, under rendering engine, we'd use XPU alpha, uh, the engine alpha, and then hit karma viewport. Then this pops up. You want to go and go to your perspective and hit karma. Let's close that. Go into the viewport. Here and one, I'm just going to move that over to the side and we'll just throw down an environment light. That'll give us some shadows. And you can see, you get some really cool effects really fast with this. So I'll just go ahead and set up here. We'll call that done. Um, so some new stuff, some kind of review, hopefully, uh, you guys learned something. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll go from there. Thank you.